Stav, Abby and Matt, the B105 Breakfast Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. Hello. We had a secret service. Mm. <laughs> Just that's funny. When not you, so we, secret. No, we tracked him down. Mm. But you could have a former secret service. Of course, they're not going to be talking while they're uh, protecting the president. No. Because they don't have any time off by the sound of it. No. I just love Working that they're called the, the secret service, but yet we all know who they are and what they do. Yeah. So it's not so secretive. They wear the best suits. So you, yeah, you think they've got a nice cut? Yeah. Are they all armed? Because we, yeah. the interesting chat that we yeah. had is I didn't realise how many different types of secret service there are, mm. and there's ones that are just there to take down any shooters. Mm. Yeah. They should, you would think, I would want someone who's protecting me to have some sort of weapon. It's mm. America. But what he said about having... They're not issued by the secret service. They just, they just have carry because they <laughs> like them. <laughs> what he said about them, though, the part where you have to push the gun in your stomach. Mm. Yeah. Did you know that? No. No, I guess it makes sense, but mm. at least they, they probably know the part of their stomach which is likely to do the least oh, amount of damage. Oh, I don't know. Mm. But anyway, when you hear the chat, it, would, it could still go through your spinal cord. Yeah, mm. but that's what you're there for. You mm. literally are a human shield. Mm. Oh, I'm annoyed I didn't ask him how much they get paid. Mm. Next time. That's what's Next their, time. What's their yeah. life worth? You can probably look that up on the internet. Like, if you get shot, do you get extra pay? I know they've started up a GoFund uh, me page for the guy who sadly lost his life. Protecting his daughter. Yeah. Mm. I know that the Trump, um, what do you call it? Administration. Administration set that up, yeah. Hmm. Uh, how much do they get paid? Wow, that doesn't seem like it's worth it. The tips how much? are great, though. Um, as high as one hundred and four thousand dollars. Mm. It's all right. No, it's not. <laughs> to get to a hundred grand a year to possibly get killed. You could no. possibly be killed beyond less than that. Yeah, but the, mm. it's quite a lot less. Well, when you think of it, when was the last time this happened? Yeah, but still. <laughs> I mean, if you're happy to work for that, just me personally. <laughs> yeah. He takes a bullet for us like, every day. Yeah, yeah he does. True. And only for a hundred grand. What a good guy. <laughs> hey, and you uh, tracking down the recordings of the Russian spies was pretty. Epic. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Two Russian spies were arrested in Brisbane. I found what uh, priceless information they garnered from living in our fair city. Mm. Mm. And now that you've revealed those secrets, <laughs> they're going to be coming for you, my friend. Yeah. Putin's going to be after me. Uh, you sure it was Putin? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into it, guys. Here's the podcast. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Abby's Cheerleading Challenge. Cheerleaders, we are cheerleaders. Bring it on. Yes, this is huge, Brisbane. Put it in your calendar, August 18, Nissan Arena. Abby is going to be performing at the Australasian Championships, the Utopia Cheer and Dance Competition. So yesterday, mm. oh gosh, I tell you what, I'm so sore. Oh, I'm yeah? so sore. I didn't actually do anything, Steph. Mm. So I uh, last night I went to an Ogre and I went to uh, the Brisbane All Star Cheerleading, and I have to say, I walked in and I was like, oh, I think there's been a bit of an error here. It's got gymnastics on the wall, mm. <laughs> and I just freaked out. They are absolutely amazing. So like, I I walked in, and I saw a couple of them um, training, and how did I see them training? Well, because they were up in the air. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. What's the problem? You said you wanted to be a cheerleader. Stav and I spent our entire holidays planning for you to be in this competition. Because I think I got a little bit wrong when I looked at the Dallas cheerleading documentary. And I was like, oh, I could do that. And they have pom-poms, right? Yeah. And they do their routine, which I thought was cheerleading. Like, go you team. Yeah, no. So the more I've learnt now is we call it cheer. Yeah. It is cheerleading, but it's cheer. It's more athletic. Mm. And it's embarrassing to have pom-poms. Which are, oh. they're called poms, poms not pom poms. No, no. No, yeah. It, like when people do the poms, you're like, oh, cute. Oh, cringe. Yeah. Oh, really? So I've got to get rid of pom poms. That's right. in the past. Okay, poms Don't even mention poms at the moment. Poms are gone. Yeah. They just lost oh. to the Spain, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I went there and they went through a bit of a, a routine with me. There's a few things I have to learn. And I don't know what. I don't know what's happening with, like, you'll be right. Everyone keeps going, you'll be fine. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, cool, so I don't really have to do the splits. And then she was teaching me how to do the splits. And mm. I was like, I've only got five weeks. And she goes, yeah, you'll get there. I'm like, what do you mean I'll get there? Like, you can't just all of a sudden become... We're not talking all of a sudden. You said you got five weeks. Mm. 
Well, they're also cheerleaders. They're meant to lift the team up, yeah. not be like, that. Ah, you're screwed. Yeah. Imagine, Go imagine that. Oh, screwed. Imagine that the cheerleaders set up to the game and be like, no way you're going to win. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to lose. Lose, lose, lose. I, you can do it's it. It's all about timing as well. Yeah, I feel like I used to be better at picking up dance routines 25 yeah. years ago. Mm. Well, glug, glug. First. Yeah. <laughs> well, they weren't dance routines. Then you were just improv weren't you? Oh, yeah, I well, was. Yeah. If we give you a pole, will that help? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't a, dance with a pole. A Sorry, a cage. Pole. Was it a cage? Cage? Were you a cage? cage? Yeah, I was in a cage. Uh. Um, I'm excited for you. Oh, uh, yeah. So I want to hear how it went. Mm. Here you are, uh, first your first practice okay. with your coach from Brisbane All-Star Cheerleading. So we're going to go over some basic motions with you, just so you learn all the terminology, because yes. when we're going to teach you the choreography, we want you to know, like what's going on and what we're actually telling you to do. Because my only fear is that it says gymnastics and people are more like doing flips and stuff. So I can't learn that in five weeks, can I? No. So are we doing more like dance? We're going to be doing some dance and motions today. Motion. And we're going to teach you okay. um, a little trick. We're going to see if you can do a trick that will go in the start of the routine. Okay. <laughs> do I get a clue on what the trick is? Yeah, yeah but we'll go over it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is it a secret trick? No. Well, we've got a bit of surprise for the routine. We don't want people to know our oh, choreography no, before yeah, like, okay. we get yeah. out on the floor. Yeah. yeah. And so okay. we, we also like adapt the routine to you. So like we'll, we're going to work with what's going to complement <laughs> you as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I think Ash over here, I always say that her toxic trait is always supporting me when I don't deserve it. So she's like, yeah, you're a professional dancer. I'm like, I dance at a nightclub. Um, do you know what I mean? Like, that's a bit different. On not a stage? Not... On the stage? Yeah, in a cage. It's not really doing, like, bat flips and stuff. Rhythm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're positively encouraging, but we're also realistic, so don't worry. Okay, all right. Yeah. Did you like that? Positively encouraging, but also realistic. That was the worst polite sledge I've ever heard of my I life. I actually love, I love Helena, who's in charge there. I know. I mm. love her. And she's in charge because she reminds me of all my, like, my dance teachers back in the day mm. where we did it. And we're like, yeah, they'll be right. She goes, all right, cool. Again. Mm. And you're like, oh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Because she wasn't happy with it. Mm. <laughs> we'll adapt it to you. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have to lift. Maybe they have to go better. I asked about the average age, right? mm-hmm. and <laughs> you know that I'm performing with like 12, 14 year olds. Yes, 12, you knew that. As in, there's twelve of them, or twelve a or fourteen year olds, <laughs> right. and then they've asked a couple of them if they have any parents that are willing to do. So they want to put in two other token mums, yeah, so that I won't feel left out. They're not token. Oh, Alex knew she was a token when she came in. She came out of the thing, and she goes to me. Apparently, I'm doing this thing with you. <laughs> and I was like, cool, but I think we've got poms and we're dancing. She goes, no, no, poms. no one does poms. That's no embarrassing. Poms. I was like, yeah, cool. So do any of the other test. moms do it? They used to. Yeah. Oh, really? what are they whinging about? Mm. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. The only one that has really turned around to being so embarrassed, so embarrassed. I can't believe mum's doing this. Mm-hmm. The boys came to school and said, you wanted to be a cheerleader. How embarrassing. What is this going to think for me? And then I came home and I was like, oh, all the other cheerleaders are like 12. And my eldest son was like, I'll come and support you, mum. Ah. And make sure you hand out my snap. <laughs> ah. uh, well, when we come back, we are going to talk to uh, Coach Holly because I know you're putting yourself down, but she, I think, will have a different report. Yeah, there's always two sides to a Coleman story. Of course. Mm. Always. I think you guys need to lower your expectation. Oh, they're pretty low. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <good. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Stand by, we'll chat to our next. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby, and Matt. Abby's Cheerleading Challenge. We are cheerleaders. We are cheerleaders. Bring it on. You are welcome. You told us that you wanted to be a cheerleader. It's something you never got to do. You try it, you put your name down, um, and then, oh, that's cool. Wow. And you never went to the tryouts. She's just showing us her big, sparkly. Helena gave me a present last night. She's like, I've got to go, I got to go to the car and get something. I was like, is it a secret weapon? She's like, yeah. Um, and I have a Brisbane All-Star cheerleading bow. bow. That's gnarly. That's bow to huge, that thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Big hair, big makeup, big bows. Mm-hmm. Love it. All and right, big so kicks. Big. <laughs> <laughs> Holly from Brisbane All-Star cheerleading is your coach. You had your first uh, run through of the routine last night. How did she go, Holly? She went so well. Yeah, she did really well. We worked on a few things. I was 
surprise, presently surprised. It was great. There you go. See, you're so hard on you. You're your own worst critic. What did Helena say? No, Helena asked me how it went, and I said it went great. We got everything done we needed to get done. You're going to be great on the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just say that because <laughs> she's in charge, and when she came in, we were showing her a lift. Like she, yeah. she didn't give much expression, and I kind of, I love her already because she reminds me of my old dance coaches from when uh-huh. I was like, you know, fifteen, where you like you want to impress her, mm, like Abby Lee. Yeah. And she wasn't, yes, but she wasn't like, that was great. She's like, mm, okay, try other leg. I was uh, like, no, that's all I got. That's it. And she's like, mm, okay, it's not really working. And I was like, okay. She's like, again. I was yeah. like, oh. But from what you've seen, Holly, do you think in the time frame you've got that Abby will be ready? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. We're going to start working on the routine today. So okay. um, we'll, we'll have a look at it and then we'll start training next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then by then we'll only have four weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's how time that's, works. That's good, though. Mm-hmm. Because if you had, like, six months, you'd, you'd sit around. overthink it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You'd be like, yeah. oh, heaps of time. Yeah. I'm getting new shoes, so I need uh, cheerleading shoes. Okay. What are so they? they're, like, white. Would they say, would you say, like, soft-soled sneakers? Yeah, they're quite soft. They're more so to um, fit your foot better and support your ankle. Mm. Yeah. Oh, they, are they actually, yeah. like, cheerleading shoes specific? Yeah, mate. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to make money out of this sort of stuff. What are we yeah, wearing? Like, yeah. Oh, we're going to have some sparkly outfits, some mm-hmm. uniforms. You're getting so, your very own special one that Stav and I are designing. No, we're all going to wear the same. Sure. Yeah. I'm not wearing, I'm not wearing a different. The whole thing is we, we're, we're a... What do we, we call we get, it? We're a group? We're a tribe? What do you call squad, the Squad. A team, yeah. A team. Yeah, no, we're a team. Everyone's wearing the same. Mm-hmm. We were going to combine this with your other dream of being a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> That's went... not funny, Holly. Don't encourage them. <laughs> um, Holly, you did say, because what's the age group of this team? <laughs> this team is 14 plus. 14, 14 plus, See? yeah. So most of them are yeah. 14 with three token mums. Yeah, and you're 14 plus, 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 four, plus, plus, yeah, plus. four token mums. How many mums? I think four token mums. Four, four token, token mums. mums. <laughs> yeah. Four tokens. There you go. I love it. Well, because they didn't want me to look out of place. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I so, thought you looked right in place last night. Mm-hmm. I thought you looked yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all that Botox makes you look really young. Don't get me wrong. The 14-year-olds were taller than me. <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah. <laughs> well, the video will get up on our socials. Oh, don't, don't. No, that's our secret move. You can't put that up. That's our <laughs> trick. That's oh. a, that we've only got one tricks. Oh, well, there's a we'll video. We'll have a few more in there. Of no. the girls, they lift you no, up. It's our trick move. We, it's a competition, Matt. Don't bring We're it here on. to win, aren't we, Holly? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely they they look win. like they throw you on the ground, but like, did they drop you or did they peg? There was a, there was one sort of drop, you know, and okay. I landed on my shoulder. No an issue. Just had shoulder reconstruction. Mm-hmm. You rolled but, out I, of it well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. As a cheerleader, you learn to learn. drop and roll. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, drop and roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well. Uh, the 18th of August is when it is all happening. Um, we can't wait to see how this continues to play out, Holly. We will continue to pump up her tyres because she's being a bit negative on herself. She is. That's no good. We need a positive attitude, Abby. That's yes, right. yeah. I'm, I did do the stretches <laughs> that you gave me this morning. They hurt. Good. That's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hurt. Maybe not good, but keep up those stretches. You'll be split in mm-hmm. no time. Mm-hmm. Limber up. Uh, good stuff. Thanks, Holly. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Well, other news did happen over the weekend that has seemingly been um, forgotten or at least overshadowed by the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. But we were all talking about it in the office just before we left on Friday because it was pretty big news. It was breaking news, news, remember, on the TV? It was breaking news. They had to do a press conference about spies. Spies. Two Mm. Russian spies, allegedly. Uh, Kira Kirolyov and her husband, Igor, which is perfect. (laughs) Classic. um, Were uh, face caught in Brisbane on Friday, each with one count of uh, preparing for espionage offences, which carries a maximum of 15 years jail sentence. There were two Russian expats who lived here for 10 years, and one of them even joined the army. I know, in information. Yeah. And 15 then in her, years um, doesn't seem like long enough for me to be selling secrets about our country. I don't think 15 I think they've only been 10, 10 years. 10, said. You know, oh, I thought you said 15. No. They've that's, only been 10 years, yeah. And then apparently a, she went back to Russia and she asked holidays. her husband to log into the computer, mm. get not, some information. Not enough time for me. If you're trying to... Like, bring down a country, yeah. I feel like you should get a bit more time. Well, see, for me, I, I think they should have done their research. You know, if they go, where do we send these to that they can do the most damage to the infrastructure of, you, a, of a country? You'd be thinking, like, Canberra, wouldn't you? Or Sydney? Not, or Not Bris Vegas. 
you know? They're just a bit play. too relaxed. Mm, mm. I think because he was a, wasn't he a gardener? Yeah. Maybe oh, that's... So they, yes. But she had a, she has her own YouTube channel mm. where she does traveling. And I'm like, is that, hey, yeah. not a spy, I'm a YouTuber. But that's where mm. they're probably, she's obviously said to Poon, she said, send me there to Queensland, you know, where it's beautiful one day, perfect, perfect the, the next. next. Yeah. Yeah. In the marketing. I want yeah. a spy from the beach. <laughs> if, if you got to choose, that's true. you would want a spy that's from guess, the beach. That's I guess. True. But yeah. what information yeah. would they give? Like what? Mm. Well, funny, funny you say that, Abby. Funny mm-hmm. you say that because uh, I pulled some strings with my friends at the uh, Department of ASIO. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, no he's well. a Scottish spy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long play. It is a long play. Uh, and uh, this isn't this isn't these guys. There were actually two other uh, Russian um, spies in Brisbane as well. You know, that's how they do it. They work in cells. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. And I've got the uh, the interview uh, of the original two. Uh, their first meeting with their um, their Soviet masters back uh-huh. home with their first report of all the information that they might managed to garner about Brisbane and how it could be brought down from the inside. Okay. So, Boris and Natasha, you have been deep undercover in Brisbane for 10 years now. What information have you uncovered that can help the motherland? Well, do you know it's where Bluey lives? And who is Bluey? Oh, she's a cartoon dog. She's adorable. da 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 Bluey! Enough! Any useful information? Well, if you want to get to the Gold Coast on a Friday, you have to leave at least by one o'clock. Otherwise, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I mean, not like Ukraine, which is a real nightmare, but it's pretty bad. Anything useful, I said? Da, da. They are ruled by a king, but he is so poor, he has to read the sport on the news. Da, da. And the most popular radio show plays Taylor Swift more than Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, and it's hosted by a man who dresses as a woman and wears a blonde wig and a 40-year-old woman who thinks she's a cheerleader. It's sad, really. Very sad. Da, da, da. We know about the cross-dresser from TikTok. Anything else? Well, there is one man who may be a concern. He is loved and worshipped by all. No one dislikes him. He could be a powerful ally. And what is his name? Dan Murphy. You idiots! <laughs> Have you got any useful information at all? Well, we did find out about that terrorist organization you wanted us to look into, and they won't be a concern. They're eating garbage from bins and stealing people's chips. They call them bin chickens, though, not Ibis. Ibis? I said ISIS, you moron! ISIS! <laughs> I don't think we need to be worried. (laughs) The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Breaking news. Shooting at Trump rally. Rushed former President Trump off the stage. Attempted assassination of ex-president. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, isn't it? Mm. I couldn't believe when it was coming through. And I didn't even know, when you first saw the images, I didn't know what had happened. I thought it was, like, staged. Do you mm. know what I mean? Where everyone was like... Well, minute. that's the conspiracy. No. Well, mm. I, yeah, they did um, take down a shooter after they uh, saw that he was attempting to do an assassination. I think he sliced his ear, didn't he, on yeah, the top of it. Took a bit of we ear haven't off. actually seen what's happened. He said that he's all right. But yeah. it was really quite strange watching the video of it because... I could imagine if gunshots ran through, then we would all run. Mm. But a lot of people just sort of stood still. Mm. Maybe the sh- the shock of it, though. Like, some yeah. people, they dark. You see people dark and then no one really runs off. Maybe you're like, it, does it take a second to register? Is that a gun or is it something well, else? Well, I guess mm. I, I found the sound quite strange. Yeah. Because I don't really know what, I guess, gunshot. doesn't sound like the movies, those gunshots. No, it, you know does, I mean? it sounds like, like a BB gun or something. I don't know what, you know, what I was yeah. sort of expecting. But listening to it, because there was a mic on, because he was talking, you mm. could hear what Trump was saying. And as the Secret Service were coming in, I was, mine, my mind was just blown about how he needed his shoes mm. and how his shoes were off. Like, does he take them off before he talks? Yeah, he grounds himself, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they came off when they tackled him to the ground. Yeah, and then they'd have maybe. to be loafers, right? They wouldn't be tied oh, on yeah, shoes. They'd be like he'd, he'd be a Gucci loafer guy. loafers. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think they did sneakers. tackle him. He ducked down first. He didn't have the Secret Service around him. Mm. Yeah, but then they, when they pile on. Yeah, they all piled on him. Yeah, um, but they didn't knock him over. But all he kept saying was, I need my shoes. I need my shoes. Wait, wait, wait. I need my shoes. And he goes, I've got one shoe. I need my, I need my shoes. And they're like, okay, so we need to take you off stage. He's like, I need my shoes. <laughs> Maybe Melania was like, you don't come home without exactly those shoes. Exactly right. Maybe he keeps losing his shoes. And she's like, these are the last pair of shoes you'll I ever have. I think it was a panic. Maybe. What's that? Well, let's listen. You can hear in his voice. I got you, sir. I got you, sir. Let me get my shoes, sir. Hold that in your head. Bloody. Let me and then get they my keep shoes. going. Keeps going. And he's like, I, I, I need my shoes. Wow. I need my shoes. I've got one shoe. 
Mm. But once you're in, they're like, okay, we, we need to get you going. Maybe he's got And he's like, wait, feet. wait, 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 wait. Mm. And then he puts his arm up. Right. To be like. Maybe they had his orthotics in them. You know Maybe. what a trouble they are to get those yeah. things organised. Or his house key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe, probably would have just been panicking. Like, ah, my shoe. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Is, I mean, I've. I always think that, like you know, everyone's got the if the house burnt down. What do we grab? Like, what do you what do you grab? And everyone My says, phone. yeah. I mean, and the kids. <laughs> people say photos, but that's not a thing really anymore, no, is it? I used to go back into the photo be. albums, wasn't it? No, mm. because they're all on your phone. Maybe my wedding dress. Oh uh, yeah. I don't even know if I care about it. I mean, I do. I didn't mean like. Mm. That would annoy me. I've been trying to get rid Esther to get rid of her wedding dress. <laughs> Leave it in there. <laughs> what would you grab? Like you don't know, do you? Because it's that panic thing. Mm. Guitar. Yeah. Mm. I a guess snack. jewelry. A snack. <laughs> Just make a quick. I always wondered toast that with and a. Cheese. <laughs> you know how they're like, don't take anything with you if yeah, on a, in a plane. Yeah, right there, get out. And I'm like, everyone out. would still grab some things in their bag. But I guess if you're landing over water and you've got that raft, they don't want you to take anything because they don't no. want it to destroy yeah. the raft. Mm. Mm. Well, people do funny things, though, in those situations. Um, Jace, yeah. one of our producers, <laughs> um, he was in in a situation when his wife's water broke. And what did you run off and do? I went and shaved my head. Why? I have hmm. no idea why. I, I, I could not tell you. It just... Were you I planning on doing a haircut? No, because it wasn't cut that long ago. It was just... I don't know. I freaked out. Just leave me alone. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's weird. Although my sister-in-law did bake a cake as soon as she went into labour. Okay. I hey, think she baked a cake, mm. a birthday cake. Mm. <laughs> it was her husband. It's my brother's birthday, and oh. her water's broke, and she's like, "I got to bake a cake," and I was like, "That's so weird because you have to wait. Mm, like that's yeah. an hour in the oven, right?" Mm. Well, she yeah. had one in the oven. She wanted someone else to have yeah. one in the oven as well. But they they were miles away from a hospital as right. well. But everything worked out all right. Yeah, I don't. I didn't ask about the cake actually after. <laughs> I, I mean. think you meant the baby. <laughs> oh, the baby. Yeah, yeah. He's 17 now. Yeah, it was up in Darwin and it was just, she's like, my water. The cake was horrible. Dry, oh, God. Disgusting. Was it wasn't cooked in the oh, middle. Oh, bloody she hell. She sent a photo. She's like, I'm just baking a cake. My water's are broke. I'll mm. let you know How information. Mm. And then it was just a baby information. So uh, I'm like, was it, was it red velvet? What are we talking <laughs> about here? I just think people do panic. They do. They do weird yeah. things. Um, 131060, that's what we want to know. Um, what strange thing did you do? In a stressful situation, mm. like, did you grab something bizarre? Mm-hmm. Did you like, you know, worry about your shoes? I don't know. Mm. Like, what what happened? Holly in Caboolture, what did you grab in an emergency situation? I did a trump. I wanted my shoes. I was uh, in a car accident, and um, I phoned my dad. And I said, "Dad, I'm okay. I've been in an accident. I'm fine, but I can't find my shoes." <laughs> uh, and he sort of said, "You know." Forget about the shoes. Are you okay? Do we need the police? Whatever. But no, no, I'm okay, but I can't find my shoes. That's all I wanted. And he said, wow. yeah, get out of the car. Can you walk? Are you all right? So I'm not going out of the car without my shoes. <laughs> and they weren't even anything nice. They were just like $2 Kmart songs. But oh. I would not leave the car without them. Was it just shock you <laughs> did you have the, Yeah. And did you have the shoes on during the accident? No, no. I took right. them off. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, when I had the accident, I couldn't find them and um, I, it must have been the shock and afterwards when dad asked me you know, a day later or whatever what was with the shoes I, I could only put it down so I didn't want to get out of the car and like tread on sharp stuff yeah, but at the yeah. time I wasn't thinking that I just wanted my shoes on my feet <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, if my wife was in an accident she would have no shoes because her shoes are all in her car Are they? Oh. <laughs> When I get into her her driver's side, they're like, I have to empty out the whole floor. Really? Do you it's remember when they came it. out with the Barina that had the shoe, the shoe box? box? Yeah. And it was like Did a big thing. Yeah, yeah, and it was seat. a big, like, you can get in with, you know, and you can slide out your high heels and mm. then put your driving shoes on there. That yeah. wouldn't, she needs that. It wouldn't uh, surprise me. Wendy, what did you take in an emergency? Um, years ago in a country town, I was rescued by four men on a drum in a flood, Mm -hmm. and I took my curling wand and my dressing gown. (laughs) (laughs) Priorities, Wendy. (laughs) Oh, my God. A curling wand. No thinking, just grabbing what you can grab kind of deal? Yep. I had no idea why I grabbed that. Did Mm. they question? Did they say, what's that? Is that an heirloom? And you're like, yep. No, not at all. We were all herded on a back of a truck in the flood, so Mm -hmm. they didn't even know what we had. (laughs) (laughs) Did you take any of the people who lived in the house with you? Did you take them or did you just... No, 
No, I was the only one that yeah. they rescued. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> the curling wand. Have I you still it. got that curling wand? Yes, I do. Wow. Well, there you go. Oh, they don't make them it. like they used to. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anne in Silkstone, bring us home. What did you do in an emergency without thinking? Oh, well, there was a fire in our backyard when I was about 17 back in Sydney. And I grabbed my cigarettes and my dog. I said, I'm going. And everyone just looked at me and said, what's that? <laughs> and they weren't very happy with me because all I wanted my smoke and my dog. And I yeah. walked out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to get away from a fire where you may inhale smoke. <laughs> You've got to grab your exactly. cigarette first. <laughs> there was a clip a couple of weeks ago that came out. It was a fireman who um, uh, saved a baby that was choking yeah. in America. Oh, wow. You know how they can take them yeah. up to the fire station? Mm. And in the footage, the guy, the fireman's having a cigarette out the front, and I don't know whether he was even thinking about what he was doing because the people run up with the baby, and you see him freak out and walk towards it, but he takes two quick puffs and yeah. then throws it away yeah. before he starts. <laughs> like, he just like, went, these are so expensive. I went yeah. about, I've got to be prepared. <laughs> Ooh, it was wow. Like, he's just gone, <laughs> Bang, yeah, you're bang. like, mm. chuck it. Yeah. <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Have you been paying attention? They are celebrating 300 episodes of Have You Been Paying Attention? Did you get the call up for the big reunion for everyone who's going to be on the episode? <laughs> is there a u- reunion show, Ed? Yes, there is, uh, Abby. It's at midnight, uh, and it's <laughs> under the Story Bridge. And I will, I'll see you there. The password is Gina Reinhardt. See you there tonight. <laughs> of course, I'll Ed be there. He is there. You can watch it Monday, July fifteen, <laughs> mate. Wh- this is one of the best shows on television. Uh, no, thank Australia. you. It's more. It's just a miracle that it's it's on. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a it's a free to air television program that's <laughs> still taking place. You know that is a miracle in itself. Look, when we first started. I think you would remember, Abby and Staff, we were on against the 6 p.m. news, and it was a half-hour show, and we were not looking good. And I remember our lead-in was one of David Attenborough's wildlife documentaries. Mm -hmm. And tell me, here you go, does this tell you, when you're about to do a comedy show, Staff, and you know the person who sort of brings you on the MC, you want them to pump it up, right? Yes, yes. This was our lead-in for the finale of our first series when we didn't know if we were coming back or not. It was a shot of two slugs making love, Mm -hmm. and then uh, David Attenborough said, the dance of life continues and then straight to us hey how you going let's have some fun so we were not that was like episode nine and it was not looking good so to to get to 300 is nothing short of a miracle and and you've kept all those snail porn fans oh yeah yeah. those those, do you know what those perverts are the backbone of our show ironically because snails don't have one but we we accept all comers you must have done close to all of those 300 because i i can't remember seeing an episode without you up the back there uh, I've done the most, because, mm-hmm. and then, oh no, Tom and I have done the same, mm-hmm. and then, uh, so Pang takes more and more weeks off every year as he sort of gets more and more famous. Yeah, and does then it on the did, radio too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, so I think I have, I think I've done the most, and then I think the most guest, the person who's been on the most is Celia Pacola, oh, but yeah. of course we've got Glenn Robbins on for the 300th. The last time he was on, Glenn decided to do a bit. He said to us off air, he goes, um, he goes, okay, guys, I got, I got a bit, I got a bit. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. And Tom goes, okay, okay, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I was just standing. He goes, hey, we come back from the break. And, you know, because we cut some things out, as you know, Abby, uh, basically yeah. my jokes about um, Gina Reinhardt. Yeah. And so yeah. anyway, uh, I made a great Ben Robert Smith joke last week that got cut out, but that's a topic for another day. Can we hear um, it? Can you tell us what it was? Uh... Ooh. That's a no. <laughs> it's yeah. like a maybe. <laughs> Sounds like a maybe. Even for me, even yeah. for me, it was a bit much. Okay. So anyway, so Glenn goes, I've got a bit. We go, great. He goes, I've just turned 60. I've got my seniors card. And we go, oh, that's fantastic. And as he took it out, he dropped it and it fell in between his nameplate and the light. And so we had to stop the show for 40 minutes <laughs> while Glenn Robbins had his seniors card. <laughs> so the most senior moment thing that ever happened <laughs> on his thing. But he's please told us, quote, I've got something bigger planned for the weekend. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Right. I'm hoping for a full Joe Biden space out experience <laughs> from Glenn Robbins. <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll come out as Uncle Arthur. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, don't I think we haven't that. asked. Yeah, right. Don't think we haven't asked. One thing I love about the show is you've got a live audience there yeah. when you're filming, and it's so different each night. Like, you can see sometimes when it's like a, a footballer team in their 20 years of age, and you know, oh, shit, they're not going to get so no, many of so the jokes. True, Abby. That is so true, and the, and the cra- And as you know, because you guys you know, do live shows as well, you know that that makes a, it makes a difference. Sometimes you'll make a joke early, 
I call it the Diana the, the Diana principle. Mm-hmm. If you make a Princess Diana joke early mm-hmm. and they go, ooh, then you go, okay, we've got that type of crowd. Yeah. If you make a Princess Diana joke early and they're like, yeah, then I'm like, all right, these are my people. Yeah. <laughs> so that, so, but it is different every time. We had a woman the other day, Steph, she had been waiting for seven years to wow. come, and see, come and see the show. Wow. And she was in the back row. Yeah, right. Yeah. Did, just you, a, did you bring a baby? Yeah, she, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is tonight the 300th episode of Have You Been Paying Attention? Channel 10, do all the catch-ups on Template and everything. Ed Cavalier, a pleasure, buddy. Great to chat. Hey, it's always a pleasure. And keep an eye out for my special Jordans I'll be wearing for the night. I wear a different pair of uh, Jordans because they're now tax deductible. I've got a very special <laughs> pair. You never see them. Me. You're behind the desk. No, because I put them out in the promo as well, Ab, now. Because, oh. uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's tax time and I need the help. Thank you all. <laughs> and now, here's either Ed Sheeran or someone like him. <laughs> <laughs> the B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt. Everyone was very surprised with the attempted assassination of Donald Trump over the weekend. I think there's a lot of questions that come about, but the way that the Secret Service just shielded him, we were like, wow, I mean, I guess that's what they're trained for. Yeah, and you hear all the things about the car and all the mm. sort of like technology that they use. Um, we actually have on the phone right now a guy named Todd Lamb. Now, he is ex-Secret Service. He was the protection uh, in protection for President Bush and Clinton. Thanks for your time this morning, Todd. I'm happy to be with you. It's unfortunate for the circumstances, but happy to be with you. You would have seen the footage and seen it in a very different way that we would have. Um, was there anything su- that surprised you about what you saw? You know, my, my initial response was was a little bit of shock just as a citizen. But because of my background, I wasn't that surprised in this respect. The, the safest the president ever is, is inside the White House mm-hmm. at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. But the goal, the unofficial goal of the Secret Service is to make the president, his family, or any of the protectees anywhere they might be in the world, as safe as they, are, uh, as they are in the White House. That is very, very tough to do. But it's very, very hard because also during a campaign cycle, the goal of the candidate is to get close to the people, put the stage close to the people, uh, shake hands as you walk up to the stage, shake hands after you get off the stage. So it's a very, very challenging task for the United States Secret Service to protect the president or any candidate for office in a campaign environment. I know it was it was chaos, and obviously uh, nobody's really thinking clearly. The Secret Service are though, but it, it struck me as they're providing a wall of human shield around him, uh, and you can imagine. I think the majority of people would would duck down into that. He was really trying to get out of that and show the crowd his fist and that he was okay. That, that felt to me that he was putting himself and the Secret Service in more danger at that time. I, I don't know what was actually going on uh, former President Trump's mind, other than just imagine the adrenaline rush. Mm. Uh, that everybody was having, the, the patrons that were there, the, the counter snipers that were eliminating the threat, the adrenaline rush of all the Secret Service agents surrounding Donald Trump, the ad- adrenaline rush of former President Trump. He'd been shot in the ear. Mm. Uh, he'd been tackled in a good way by his security detail. His fan base, his voters are out in front of him. He wants to put on a good face for the country and for his supporters. So there was so much adrenaline. Um, I'm sure um, he wanted to be safe and do what the Secret Service told him to do, but at the same time, he wanted to respond uh, to those in the audience like, I'm okay, and we're going to continue to press on in this this campaign. As someone who was in the Secret Service, you protected President Clinton and President Bush. You would hear and see a lot of things that you have to take to your grave, right? (laughs) Well, I, I, I think that's fair to say. When I left the Secret Service, I signed a lot of papers and a lot of documents saying what I would not put in a book mm. and what I would not tell people and what I would not talk about. Because were you ever, because I, I picture it like the movies, okay? So there's the, you're sitting there in the front seat driving the car or whatever and the president's on the phone to his wife or Or whoever, girlfriend and be like, oh, the... <laughs> like, don't tell my wife. Like, he doesn't have to say that, right? Is it, <laughs> I, I imagine, does the, the president would have his one or two that he would keep the closest who could be around that sort of stuff? You know, there's really not the um, latitude for the president to do that, because if you think about it, the the Secret Service provides 24 hour protection to the president and the first lady, the first family up to a certain age and the vice president and his or her family. So my point is this. If you have 24 hour protection, you also have shift work. So whether it's eight Secret Service agents or 20 Secret Service agents on a given shift, well, after eight hours, they rotate off and a new batch rotates on. 
And the agents, to be honest, the agents don't want to do that because when you are full-time protection, you hardly ever see your family because right. you're working so much, you're traveling so much. So uh, to have kind of that special, you know, pet agent, if you will, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty few and far between if that occurs. Todd, okay. I'll put it with this: when you're watching Bill Clinton up there going, "I did not have relations with," were you like, "Well, I know you did." <laughs> Uh, well, it, it's interesting to kind of share my, my tenure. Uh, I was actually in the Secret Service Academy when the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke. Uh, so uh, I was the president of my, of my Secret Service Academy class. Wow. And we were, we were billeted on a military base called Fort Meade right outside of Washington, D.C. I had officer's quarters, so a lot of the guys came to my apartment in the evening to, to make dinner. And we were sitting around. This, this is before the 24-hour news cycle. I'm dating myself. We were sitting around having dinner, probably spaghetti. That's what guys can make. Yeah. And we were watching the news, and that's when the Lewinsky scandal broke, and it just became a surreal moment. But here's, here's something that's, that's noteworthy, I think. None of us batted an eye. It was, it was surreal to hear what was occurring in the, in the administration. But the next day, we went back to the academy. We trained. And during that training, uh, just for muscle memory, you're, you're taught to grab a handgun and to pull the muzzle of it into your stomach so that gun goes off in your stomach oh, yeah. and doesn't hurt the protectee. So it's just muscle memory. Now, man, the gun doesn't go off, right? But it's, I mean, you're just trained to do that. Mm. And we continued our training and we continued and we knew that we were going to protect President Clinton and First Lady Hillary Clinton and, and their daughter, Chelsea. So they train the you to Service dodge questions civilian. as well, Todd? Yeah. That was very well done. <laughs> very well done. <laughs> He's a professional. Well, I think I was saying that these these civilians that are agents, they're willing to take a bullet for yeah. the president uh, of the United States. It's no, an extraordinary, really. extraordinary responsibility. Horrible for teenagers though, whose parents become the the president, isn't it? Because if you want to sneak out and you can't, have yeah. a few beers and yeah. part, mm-hmm. you can't because no. you'd have a secret service agent who'd be well, ratting. And that. I've got this. I, I, we, we have great kids, but I have this unique perspective that that you know, there's no way your listeners would know this. But not just was I a secret service agent. I was the lieutenant governor of my home state of Oklahoma, which I had a security detail. I had two state troopers assigned to me at all times. So I had kids grow up who they were kind of in that protection umbrella. Now, they were good kids. They weren't trying to go out and do things, I don't think. (laughs) But they had state troopers around them all the time. So I had this unique perspective of, of protecting but also being a protectee. Wow. Bloody hell. God, if I had that, they would have had to have arrested me on the spot. <laughs> uh, Todd, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for calling through. All right. God bless Australia. Yeah, thank, thank you. Mate. Todd Lamb, an ex-Secret Service uh, agent. He protected Bill Clinton and President Bush. The B105 Breakfast Show with Stav, Abby and Matt.